Hi everybody, welcome to the Meno Lounge and happy Global Menopause Awareness Month. It's October 1st, woo woo! And of course it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month also. So basically it's our month, it's our time to celebrate all the things that make us wonderful, all the things we need to learn about, stretch ourselves and really just cherish who we are as midlife women. I'm so excited today because you know the movie is out. It's everywhere, but it hasn't had all its big premieres yet. So you are still behind the scenes. Hey, Angela, let me see if I can find our guest today. One of the most amazing esteemed producers of the film, and that is Denise Pines. Let me find her here. Let's see. All right, Denise. Hey everybody, so glad to see you today. It's such a big day and I'm so glad that we're all here together. While we're waiting for Denise to hop on, we have 30% off all the bars on all the platforms just to say, you know what? We need to have a little extra inspiration to celebrate ourselves. So here she comes, I see her. Okay. Hi. There you go, I flip your camera. Flip your camera, Denise, there you go. Of course you get a phone call, right? Okay. Of course, I know. I always have to remember to put my phone on do not disturb, you know, because disturb. yeah, that's what I just did, just as I was trying to get on. And Hello, evidently, it's one of my kids, like mom, you know, I forgot right. something, but um, right. right, yeah, you let everybody know, hey, I'm going to be off the radar, and like people don't want you off the radar, no. but hello. They don't. Hello, bestie. How are you? How are you? I'm oh. good. I am good. So excited. I have to say, well, let me, first of all, Denise and I are dear, dear friends, but I want to just read this because I want to give you some flowers here. So okay. listen up, everybody. And this is the short version of Denise's bio um, because we only have a half an hour. Okay. So Denise Pines, listen to this, is at the intersection of health, technology, and film. She advocates for age empowerment and community health and stands at the forefront of midlife wellness for women, which is so true. She founded Wise Paws Wellness, which is so wonderful. And I hope you're on Denise's list so you can get all that wonderful content she's sharing. It's a platform dedicated to pro-aging health and education. She's at the helm of the Fem Aging Project and which also leads to pitches for women and founders like myself, like Denise, who's also the CEO of Tea Botanics, an amazing line of teas for hot flashes and brain fog and all the good things. So Denise, do you sleep? Wait, but wait, uh -oh. there's more. She's also in her role as the president of the Osteopathic Metal Board of California. Um, hello, Denise, you are just incredible. So, <laughs> And there's more, there's so much more, but I want to talk about the film, but I just want you to know Denise's breadth. And by the way, this is your 12th film, Denise? Uh, 13. 13th. 13th, 13th. 13th film. You're an award-winning producer. I'm going to just lean right in. I've seen it. Okay. <laughs> I've seen it. And that's what yep. makes me want to ask this question. Oh. How do okay. you want women to feel? after they watch the film? Um, I want them to feel like somebody's listening, that they are being heard, um, that there are solutions, um, and, and <clears throat> that they should be really empowered now. I'm hoping that after they watch this film, they feel empowered to go to their doctors and talk about what's happening to them. And <clears throat> not in a way of being demanding, but from a place of, knowledge and comfort and knowing that there are solutions mm -hmm. and not being told that <clears throat> either you're too young even though you might be 46 um or i don't really believe in some kind of protocol move to another doctor um i want that's what i really want women to walk away with this film is feeling that there are people out there that are advocating for them there are policy makers um <clears throat> on a federal level on a local level that there are companies that are trying to um, embrace this and make changes and support women in the workplace um that there is so much still to be learned about this particular phase in our life um, because the research is lacking so much 
<clears throat> to know that it's going to continue to evolve. It's almost like um, I talk to people about <clears throat> hot flashes and say that my hot flash experience and intensity when I first got them is very different to when I get one now. Right. So, when I get one now, yeah. I almost don't even know I have mm -hmm. it, right? I think that something is, I, I think like, is it warm? Where before I knew I was warm, right? So to also know that this kind of evolves, right? There's like iterations of it, right? As we get older. Mm -hmm. I know I got like a frog in my throat. That's okay. okay. Sip some water. Yeah. And, and I... <laughs> let me just confirm that that was the feeling i had and so okay. much more denise so okay. much more there's some surprise learnings in the film that i'm not i'm not going to share i, I don't want to be spoiler um spoiler. but some things spoiler. that were really special and upsetting mm -hmm. and shocking that i learned that i would have thought i would have known but i did not and so you you yeah. all all of you and you know, Tams and Fidel's also producer. Um, you yes. guys did such a great job with the director on finding these pieces that women don't know about. And, you know, you yeah. and I are in this conversation every day, and so there's a yeah. you know, huge population of women who need to know from the basics yeah. to other yeah. things that are even beyond the basics. So yeah, yeah. you nailed it. Totally. Nailed it. <laughs> Thank so, you. Totally, totally you think, agree. Go, go yeah, ahead. What do you say? Or, so let me talk about <clears throat> the screening that we had. That was the very, very first screening to the public. Only 10 people have really seen this film, yeah. which is, you know, all of us, obviously. Um, but you, that audience in San Francisco at an all women's club, I'm from the Bay Area. So it was so special for me to show this film um, in my backyard, uh, my home grown backyard. And at a woman's club, mm -hmm. um, that is a club that's been around since I want to say like the 1900s. So it's been yeah. around like a really, really long time. Right. Um, it was an amazing experience. It was, you know, full house. Um, and the women stayed long. Women came over, gave me hugs, you know. Um, I know. It was like, everyone okay, asked, we're done now. And we're, no one really wanted done, to leave. Okay. No one wanted to leave. <laughs> <laughs> right, but nobody really wanted to leave, and I think that is what's going to happen around the country, really around the world. Today, we got a um, an email from uh, a Germany um, a distributor wanting to distribute the film. Um, there's a menopause, huge menopause platform in Germany that um, want to kind of do a review of the film. Um, but this has been going on like South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, UK, Canada, Lithuania. Jamaica, we're doing a screening uh, next week. It has been unbelievable, the response to a trailer. <laughs> this is yeah, not even the, just film. the trailer. So want right. to see it. So what it tells me is that this is an international issue. That is, this is the one issue that all women can rally behind because you may not decide to have a child, right? So issues around fertility and pregnancy and parenting may not be something that you experience, but I tell you one thing, you are going to experience menopause. It is universal. It happens to every single woman. Um, it's different for all of us, some severe, some not severe, some barely know they went through it, you know, um, but it is the one thing that unites us. And on that alone, this is where I think we can come together. So that's my rallying call mm -hmm. for this film is that we need to unite around the world on this on this film. I love it. And did you expect that level of global response when you when you all started sharing the trailer? No, not at all. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking across the country absolutely, across the US, across the world. Yeah. I did not. I mean, my last film, we went to UK and Canada and we had some interest in Australia. Um, but not like this, you know, Paris, I mean, I could keep going on. It's we're, we're so freaked out over here because, you know, we're, we have a plan for the U S we know how we're going to screen a film. The film is airing on PBS on October 17th. Um, so we know what we're doing domestically internationally It's coming so fast. I mean, we're trying to wrap our, our arms around, well, how can we do, you know, screenings for people? 
um, you know, one, so that the film doesn't get released into the ether and we lose control over it, right? Um, so, and, you know, but we know women want to see this. And what's so interesting is, you know, this film is really very much a U.S. perspective film um, in that the nuances of what's happening here in the U.S., right? From a, for, for example, from a policy standpoint, the U.K. has menopause policy in place and has been in place for a couple years yeah. where we have nothing like that in place here in the U.S. And so we're talking about that in this film. Right. Um, you know, where health care coverage is provided in the UK, um, you know, obviously because of the health care system that have not provided here in the US. Yeah. I would say the, the challenges that they do face is that there is not enough physicians in the US. There is not enough physicians at all in the UK. I mean, women have to wait months to go see someone. Um, in the US, we're not quite like that. We do right. have a fairly robust system where you can get in to see a physician right. within you know, a matter of weeks. Right, um, in, in, on site yeah. or telemedicine also as an exactly. option. But I think it's exactly. really special that other countries, even though, whether actually they know that you know it's American centric or not, um, there's still things to learn, I believe, oh, uh, for other absolutely. countries. So. Absolutely, yeah. There's nothing from the treatment protocol that's different, no matter what part of the world you're in, right? Because we're talking about the, the human body and the science of, you know, women's bodies or women who identify as XX bodies, you know. Um, um, so that is a that's definitely universal. How it shows up for, you know, women of color in in our country is definitely different because that is more a perspective of the healthcare system and not biology system, right? Right. Um, so right. do and I love that you that address and, that um, of women of color. You speak of different cultures and races in the film, which yes. was also quite unique and interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Of course, I, you know, I've read some of those reports just for my own research, but I don't think women are aware that there actually are some differences in different women uh, based on background, you know, all, all kinds of things that create a different experience in menopause, so. Exactly, especially powerful. even for like Asian women with their diet, if the Asian woman still has a very traditional um, sea vegetable based diet, has a lot of iodine, you know, iodine in the thyroid um, is a balancer. And so you don't find that they have as many um, fluctuating um, hot flashes um, that other women experience, but they do have other issues, right? So, um, so yeah, I think we lightly talk about that in the film. I'm not really sure. It's just something I know. It's there. It's there. Not the it's iodine there. part, but yeah. Um, yeah. But so, Denise, why now? Why do you think now is our moment? You know, this is, we've been menopausal for since day one, right? <laughs> of existing <laughs> as women. And so why now is all of this coming to the surface? We're willing to talk about it. And that's creating all this momentum around the film as well. I think there's a couple things that's kind of converged, right? There's no one thing that happened. I think what you have is you have Gen X, um, coming into this space and finding that they're going to doctors and not getting any solutions. Nobody is talking about it. Right. And they're like, oh, they're like, no, heck no, right? Because <laughs> they are have achieved a certain level in workplaces. Um, the media started covering it. So those women who write for media started saying, what the hecky heck? I'm having hot flashes. Why? Why is why haven't we been talking about this? I'm a writer. I'm going to write stories about this, right. and we're able to convince their bosses, their you know head of editorial bosses, to actually run these pieces. The New York right. Times has done the best in terms of covering this um, in Phenomenal. the last two years. Forbes, From, too, I mean, just amazing. Also, right, but because yeah. before, and then social I media, mean, social media huge right social media before, has had started... the ability to just cancel the story like no we don't want to run that nobody cares yeah, and now, exactly social media exactly et cetera, who's gonna, created this who's nobody wants to leave that exactly yeah. and then you had the wave of celebrities celebrities are on the late fray let's be clear about that they're they're not the ones who got this started they're not it's been really the women themselves again this age group which is the gen x age group and maybe early boomers um who started going on and having conversations on Facebook over like 10 years ago. 
Um, you have some of um, the early pioneers who were knocking on doors in the 80s doing events for women specifically and bringing in menopause specialists. That was Karen um, Giblet, um, who's out of New York, who's now um, in her late 70s. Mm. But in the 80s, can you imagine in the 80s talking about this? Like no, he was out there, shunned her. Was out there doing it. So there's some early pioneers who we need to respect and give them their props for, you know, getting out there when this was not popular at all. You know, I even talked to someone um, this year, you know, to help support the film, um, who is, works for an entity who could support the film and said, oh my God, why are you bringing out our dirty laundry? <laughs> I was like, oh, dirty laundry? Are you serious, lady? We're not underwear. Um, we're not underwear, lady. We're not I mean, underwear. We're humans having a human, a natural human experience that can be managed. Right. can be managed. And it hasn't been managed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've just been, there's been just some fascinating things. So, you know, in terms of timing, all, you know, I really believe all of that, you know, converging, um, you know, startups getting into it, venture capitalists starting to see this is not a niche market because before they saw it as an, I don't know how you say something that impacts more than half the population women and two happens to every woman, woman is considered to be a niche issue. How do you don't get like, me started? Where does that come from? I'm not going to get you started. Venture or VC back. <laughs> don't get me started. Don't get me started. That is a separate conversation because you know I'm like. <laughs> yeah, and then we, we can't. And then you know, let's start. Let's let's stay there for a second. And we can't get money for our firms. If I were a guy and I came in honestly with a menopause idea that was AI driven. Someone would be just asking me, how much do you need? And I'd say 10 million. And I get a check in two days. Right. In two days. With a proposal on a piece of paper. Right. Uh, on right? A I mean, this is, on a this is kind of where, on a napkin. This is the reality that, you know, women face who are in business um, from the highest chain up, right? Um, I mean, this is just kind of where it's at. And, one, and the other thing, you asked what, why now? So why now? We now have women venture capitalists who are, and women coming in to be venture capitalists, and women who have maybe a million dollars saying, hey, I can offset 100000 to someone. So we have women coming in to lift these issues up with their own money, right? right? With their own Almost money. All, and so all that of is- us in this space with brands, with software, service, et cetera, have been funded by female investors because we don't exactly. have to explain what menopause is. There yeah, is don't have to explain. It. I don't have to go in there. That we just have to say why <laughs> our product. But I don't have to have a whole dissertation. I remember the first time <laughs> I had looked at trying to raise money. Um, it was with, my partner is a, a is a doctor for T Okay, T Botanics. Put my T Botanics out, out on for a second. Uh, so T Botanics, we have a line of um, menopausal teas from hot flashes and nice sweats to brain fog and anxiety. And I remember early on, uh, we were looking to you know we already have you know put in our own money. We're looking maybe to get another person. And so my business partner, who's a physician, um, said, um, "Hey, I got a friend. Um, let's go talk with them." So we go to talk, we go to talk with them at the very beginning, and he's in his like very early thir 30s. And he says, um, hey, um, what's this hot flash thing? I don't know anything about it. I don't even think it's real. Do you think it's real, Denise? <laughs> I said, do you want me to have a hot flash right in front of you so you can see how what it's like? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Right. And then he went into, and I think a lot of times this is what happens with men venture capitalists is they their only experience is their wife mm -hmm. and they don't even mm -hmm. know what their wives are no. doing they don't know their wives are on hrt they don't know any of these things so their only experience is that person and they just and it typically it's just their wife it won't be anybody it won't be you know a grandmother or auntie or it's just oh my wife nothing she's great she's fine okay mm -hmm. well you know you're super wealthy. She probably was able to go to a really great um, menopause specialist and she got HRT. Why don't you ask her what, you know, formula of HRT is she on? Right. I mean, this is, this is what you find yourself up against is that kind of thinking. So my, 
experience as a DC. In terms of the oh my film, God. for you raising funds to complete the film, right? I mean, it's that don't same thing. Don't let me go there about I, okay, so everybody this who is, is behind on the scenes, this, Denise, I, go there. Okay. We want to hear. Okay, Thank I'm going to go there on this. I went to all of the companies who, including the, uh, met the, you know, the drug companies. So think of all the drugs for HRT. Think of no, non-hormonal drugs um, and, and um, some, some of the supplement companies. All the, you know, the, the panties, the panty companies, I want you to wear their panties, the um, hormonal test companies. I went to all of them to support this film, either support the film production or support us getting the word out, doing screenings. Zero, zero. They want women's money. They're not willing to support the education around them. So you think about that when you go into the store and you look at those products or you look at those ads. Wow. I'm not saying they don't care about you. Right. I'm just saying, I'm just letting you figure it right. out. <laughs> we'll leave that here. <laughs> Note who is educating, supporting, sharing information all the time, right? And Yes, and yes. That's a whole yes. thing. Denise, we need to have another conversation about that because, yeah. whoa. All right, so let me say, what shocked and surprised you when putting together this film? Um, I think what surprised me was the story that we tell about the brain. And I will just share this, but you'll, you'll have to actually see the correlation. Um, one, we don't talk enough about the brain um, reproductive connection, right? Um, it, that's one of the things that RT does is it connects between the brain and reproductive system. We don't talk about that enough. We have estrogen, progesterone, uh, we have hormonal receptions all over our bodies, all over our brain cells, and we don't talk about that enough. And in the film, um, Dr. Moscone talks about that connection, and because she's a neuroscientist. And I think what was most fascinating was that she showed the um, before brain, so before you, the brain before perimenopause, she shows the brain during perimenopause, and we can show the actual impact that is happening on our brain. And then she shows the brain after, once you hit menopause. Right. And what was fascinating is some women go through it and they have a 20-year-old brain. I didn't get that. Right. Some women come through it and they get the same brain they went in. Right. On, on I got that one. Side, right? Right, when right. You see the curve. Exactly. Right. I got actually, that brain. I got that brain. Yeah, and I then, knew you said and, I didn't get that brain. I didn't get the 20 year old brain back. I didn't get the 20 year old brain, Thanks. right? And then there is the brain that actually declines. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to focus our research and understanding why that decline for those women. Those are the women that we're going to see on the other side of dementia and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And it's right inside of here, right inside perimenopause that we can make, we can change and make a difference. Mm -hmm. That was the most surprising thing. It blew my brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> I still retain that. I just wonder, it really rewind was, all um, of that and watch it again. Although I read, you know, Dr. Lisa Moscone's book, but just hearing her talk about it in yeah. such a succinct yeah. way, you know, that's yes. the other part that I loved about the movie is that you can get so much information. It's not a four yeah. hour, um, you know, <laughs> A Titanic movie or something, you know, it's like so condensed and really has all the great information in just such a small perfect yeah. package, which is. And I see Dr. Marisa that has is talking about neuroinflammation over time. Absolutely, yes. um, you know, a lot of times people don't realize that they have metals in their system, and eventually those metals start, you know, attaching to our brain cells, and they attach to our brain cells, and like anything you've seen with metal, metal rusts. So imagine you got these little rusting particles on your brain, creating inflammation in your brain, and then you go through perimenopause. Right. You know, what people don't realize is that the body has taken in so many toxins and then it reached this midpoint in life. For women, it shows up pretty quick because, you know, we also start having an equilibrium change, right? Our hormones start to change. It starts to say, we no longer, we no longer have to have you amped up because you're you're no longer needing to be in this sort of childbearing time frame. So we're going to start shutting some of these, you know, hormones off at this high level. 
Well, you also come into it with all the other things you've been doing up until that midpoint. Right. So if you've been eating a ton of sugar, you've been drinking a lot of alcohol, you've been smoking cigarettes, you've been eating mostly, a, you know, foods that are, you know, ultra processed. That's all inflammation. It's all throughout your body, your organs, your cells, your brain. And then poof, you, you find like all of a sudden you've got all of these issues in your mid forties to mid fifties, right? So I was we looking can, at the, we can turn it around. Lifestyle matters. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, we can we can we can turn we can definitely turn it around. And at this age, we can do still do some prevention um, measures, right? I mean, once we hit a certain age, you know, if we are taking it all the way to seventy five, and we are now starting, you're not really doing prevention. You are doing a maintenance, mm -hmm. right? You can try to look at how you maintain where you you are by making the changes. Right. But that counts too. So start now, wherever you are. Oh, absolutely. Start now it makes a big impact. Okay, Denise, yeah. I know you've got all kinds of press, all things happening. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow to come to New York literally for the whole month. Uh, all things menopause. There are so many events. I'm speaking at Life in the Pause on next Saturday. And then we've got okay. the swell. We've got Tamsin screening. We have. Um, uh, just Dr. Heather Hirsch and Dr. Ali Sharma have an event okay. and I don't want to miss any like and then your event you have your premiere in LA on the 13th 13th there's so and then we'll be back so many in New York on the 18th um you know we're doing something with she media on the the 10th on the 10th uh, right I knew there was yeah, something yeah, else okay yeah, that's yeah the yeah, 10th yeah, yeah, yeah. on the 10th I'm <laughs> that's why I figured I'm just gonna stay and then try to zoom back to LA Okay. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Come back. Yeah. Come back to LA if you can. Um, that would be great. That's a Sunday. You can pop in and pop out and go back on a red eye. You know how LA is. <laughs> All the things. Right. I mean, this is just what you and I do. I mean, we are so honored. Denise and I get to talk about menopause, you know, with, with Denise having T botanics and men well and have these conversations yeah. because we both know how important the lever of lifestyle and natural support to whatever else you're doing yep. whether that's hrt hormone replacement therapy or not we know that taking yep. care of your body from the inside out matters 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 matter. okay matters. Denise, we're talking about screenings and film but i don't know that people understand exactly how they can see it so tell them again where it's going to be on sure. television et cetera, et cetera. yes so it's going to be on PBS. You can go to pbs.org slash the M factor or all things about this film and going to screenings is at the M factor film.com. The M factor film.com is everything. If you want to host the screening, host the watch party in your home, um, come to a screening um, in a city that's close to you. Everything is actually on that um, website. Oh, and the last thing, oh my gosh, we, the film has been um, accredited for continuing medical education. And on October 17th, for all physicians, all nurses, um, uh, physicians who are faculty, dentists as well, if you watch this film on October 17th and even past October 17th, um, it'll be on the uh, website. Um, That's you awesome. Will get so, wait, let's just pause there because we know okay. a huge gap in this experience is educating doctors, yeah. nurse practitioners, et cetera. So, uh, you know, extra congrats beyond women. If we know things, yeah. but then we go to our, our care providers and they don't know, it's a big stopper. So thank you so much for making sure that happened, Denise. I know that's part of your superpower, continuing <laughs> education. Um, but that is going to be the linchpin, I really believe, in all of this, making a big shift. So thank you for that. Yes, 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 yes. So there's somebody who wants to attend the premiere in Los Angeles. Yes, you can. Um, Send us an email at the M Factor Film at Gmail. Um, just put in um, you 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 know mental well, um, and I'll make sure that you get an invitation to be able to come. Um, yeah, so super excited um, about that. Um, I'm working with um, the governing arms of medical schools as well to see if we can get this film to be part of their curriculum to watch. 
Um, so, so many things that we're trying to do in the healthcare space, because I, I agree, we can't just empower women to go to doctors who don't know. We have to empower women to go to their doctors and we have to train our doctors to know how to um, support our women when they show up to them. Beautiful. Denise, Thank you for sharing your superpowers, your 13th film. You're an award-winning <laughs> producer, filmmaker, you know, midlife uh, product entrepreneur with T Botanics. You know, you're just doing all the things and you love technology and you're a superstar there. So Thanks. that's why I love you. I'm so grateful, honored to know you and to talk about menopause with you pretty much every single other day. So let me tell, I know we're almost out of time, but I'm just going to I'll stay on the oh, okay, okay. I know you've got time. Okay, go, go. I just want to tell a, um, a, a little piece that, that Julie doesn't even know actually about the film. Ooh. So um, Julie, I asked Julie, I saw Julie knew Tamsin Fidel, and I asked Julie to do an introduction. She introduced me to Tamsin. Tamsin and I get on the phone, and we instantly fall in love with each other. And that falling in love actually formed this film happening. And I had been already out in the market trying to get this film. Tamsin had just started running out in, in, with her cell phone and just recording women. She didn't know what she was going to do. She was here, there, everywhere at events where doctors were and just was capturing this. And that sort of formulation of us coming together on you know, our desire uh, to do a film of some sort um, really was the impetus of this film happening. Well, I'm so, so thank glad. you, Julie. I'm so glad uh, because this is such an important thing, and to bring two of you who I both you know just adore and admire that I'm just honored, and I'm glad it worked out. I knew you would love each other, but and why not? Right? That's the beauty of being in this menopause conversation for everyone here who's listening you have this same power to plus one yeah. plus yeah. five this conversation yeah. and i heard denise talking to me about what she was doing in tamsin i'm like okay well if these two came together what is possible so all of yeah. us here can come together with whoever is in your own circle to do great things for women and beyond so i'm so glad yeah. i could have a small little part there Good. I want free tickets everywhere I go. <laughs> you got it. Okay, good. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in all the things this month. All right? Of course. Okay. okay. Bye, everybody. Remember, everybody, go to the mfactormovie.com and do a screening. You can no. do your own screening. mfactorfilm.com. mfactorfilm.com. Okay, perfect. Be well. See you soon. Okay. Bye, everybody. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.